All right, today we start learning how to divide monomials. And remember, like we said, if we're talking about a monomial, we're talking about a single algebra term. Okay, so when we see the prefix mono, as we said, mono means one. So if we're talking about a monomial, we're talking about one algebra term. So if we're dividing those, we're going to have one algebra term over another algebra term, like maybe 8x cubed over 6x, something like that. That would be an example of the type of problems we're going to be seeing today. Okay? So they're not that bad, but we need to start at the beginning. You're going to be asked to simplify. I've got about <coughs> nine or ten examples for us to work through. So uh, let's start with this first problem. If we have 15 over 21, a basic fraction, okay? If I want to simplify a basic fraction, then I need to divide the top and bottom by the biggest number that will go into both of them. So in this case, what is that number? Three. So if I divide both of these by 3, then I get a simplified fraction, which is 5 sevenths. All right. Well, we can do the same thing with monomials or algebra expressions. If I had a problem like this, negative 4xy over 10x, let's say. Well, we do it exactly the same way. First thing I want you to notice is that 4xy means 4 times x times y. And 10x means 10 times x. All right? So when there are a product, or when there is a product on the top and bottom, we can just simplify any old way that we want to. All right? So let's start with this 4 tenths. How would I simplify 4 tenths? Well, wouldn't I divide the top and bottom by 2? Divide this by 2. Divide that by 2. And what would it become? It would become negative 2 fifths. Good. So then we need to simplify this x over x thing. Well, that's not real hard. If I have a number over itself, isn't that just 1? This is 1, so all I need to do with these x's, since they're both to the same power, you just mark them out. They just go away. Okay? We can just slash them. I, I say we slash them away. And the y, though, doesn't have anything else that I can slash with. So the y stays in my answer. My answer is negative 2y over 5. Okay? So let me give you one to try on your own. We'll call this a class example. You simplify 24mn over 18n. I'm going to pause the video. If you're watching this at home, pause the video and try that one without my help. All right, we should have divided the top and bottom by 6 so that I have a four, 24 divided by 6 is 4, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and I have this n over n, which I can slash out, and now I just have an m on top. And there's my answer, 4m over 3. Now, we also have some work to do with exponents. If I am simplifying, you know, monomials that are written as a fraction, a lot of times they will have exponents, the variables will. So if I have c to the seventh over c to the fourth, earlier in the year we learned a little rule for this. And that is that all I have to do is subtract the exponents. So what is 7 minus 4? It's 3, 
So this is c to the third, but I need to ask you a question. Is that c to the third on top or on bottom of the fraction? It's on top. Technically, this is c to the third over 1. Now, we wouldn't have to write it over 1, but you do need to see that because this power on top is bigger, all right, that the c to the third stays on top. And this next example will help clear that up. If I had a to the third, if I had a to the third over a to the eighth, now on this problem, the difference between 8 and 3 is 5, isn't it? So there is an a to the fifth left, but look where the bigger power is. It's in the bottom, right? So my a to the fifth is in the bottom, and on top I just have a 1. So my answer is 1 over a to the fifth. Now let me show you why that's the case. The top is a to the third, which is that. Okay. The bottom is a to the eighth, which is, of course, I'm going to go ahead and write it out so you can see it. There's a to the eighth on the bottom. Okay. So we don't have to do this step down here that I'm showing you. I'm just trying to help you understand. Remember we said we can slash these things, right? So look what I'm left with. I'm left with an a to the fifth on the bottom and a 1 on the top. Now, we could write that as a negative exponent. We could write that as a to the negative fifth, but we're not going to do that today. We'll, let's just write it as 1 over a to the fifth. Okay, we'll work some more with negative exponents later. So what if I had an actual number with powers, like 10? 10 to the 13th over 10 to the 10th. Would I do anything different? No. I still just subtract the exponents. What's 13 minus 10? 3. So this would be 10 to the 3rd. Is it on top or on bottom? On top. So it's technically over 1. And I could multiply that out 10 times 10 times 10 and get 1,000 if I wanted to, all right? But 10 to the third is totally okay. They may also mix up a problem with those 10s with some things multiplied in front of it, like this. 8 times 10 to the 7th over 4 times 10 to the 5th. This isn't real difficult either. We just have to take it in pieces. Let's start with the 8 and the 4. Can't I divide both those by 4? Right? So if I divide 8 by 4, don't I get 2? And if I divide 4 by 4, don't I get 1? Right? Just simplifying the 8 and the 4, that becomes 2 over 1. Now, how can I simplify this 10 to the 7th over 10 to the 5th? Subtract the 7 minus 5, which is 2. And my 10 to the 2nd is left on top, like that. Okay. Now, on that answer, couldn't I simplify that a little bit? Yeah. Don't I know what 10 to the second power is? Isn't that 100? Right? So what's 2 times 100? I could write this answer as 200. All right? Just, just so you know. Now, let's uh, step it up a notch and look at this problem. Because you're going to have several like this in homework where I have a monomial that has three different pieces to it. 
okay? I've got a monomial on top and bottom, and they both have a regular number, or a constant we would call it, and then it's got an x and a y. This isn't hard, we just need to take it in pieces. So let's first simplify the 12 fifteenths. How, what would I divide both of those by? Three. three. So if I divide 12 by 3, I get 4, but it is technically a negative 4. And if I divide 15 by 3, I get 5. Now I have um, my x's to deal with. x to the third over x. Well, don't I just need to subtract the exponents? 3 minus what? On the bottom, it's a, this is a, like a 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so I have an x to the second left on top. And with the y's, when I do that, do the y's, 4 minus 2 is 2, but where is the y to the second at? On the bottom. On the bottom. So on the bottom, I have this y to the second. So there's my answer for that problem. Negative 4x squared over 5y squared. Let me give you a problem like that to try on your own, because there are several of those in homework. Negative 24 b to the third c squared over 20 b squared c to the fifth. Let's pause the video and you try that. All right, on the top and bottom I can divide both of these by 4. So that will leave me with a negative 6 over 5. With the b to the third and the b to the second, I just subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, so I have a b to the first on top. I don't have to write that 1, but I did there. And then with the c's, 5 minus 2 is 3, but the c to the third is going to be on the bottom, like that. Okay? No, you don't have to write the 1. All right, we have two more examples um, that involve negatives. Actually, one more example, and then we'll be done. Negative a to the fifth over negative a to the second. Now, you have to pay attention on this one a little bit. It's, it looks easier, um, but sometimes with these negatives, um, people run into issues. Um, so what am I going to do here? Well, since the top and the bottom, aren't these exactly the same? Yeah. Right? Since they are exactly the same, and that's important, they have to be exactly the same. Since they are exactly the same, then yes, I can just subtract the 5 minus 2. So that's 3, right? So now I have negative a to the third. Notice I keep it in parentheses. Okay. Now, just a second. Um, if I wanted to simplify that a little bit farther, isn't this like a negative 1 in here? Okay. Well, when I have a power on the outside, and two things on the inside, I technically distribute that power to both of these. So, negative 1 to the third times a to the third is another step that I could take. I can distribute that third power to each of the things on the inside. Now, what is negative 1 to the third? No, it's, isn't it negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1? Which is just going to be negative 1, isn't it? So my final answer, I could write this as negative 1 a cubed, like that. 
Now we do have one problem that I forgot to go over. We need to go over one more. And that's a problem where we also have to distribute one like this. 5a to the second to the third over 5a to the third to the second. Now if you'll notice on this problem, if you look inside parentheses, they're not the same, are they? The one on top is 5a to the second, the one on bottom is 5a to the third. So I can't just subtract this 3 and this 2. I can't just subtract them because what's on the inside is not the same. So what I have to do is distribute that power to both of these terms on the inside. So the top becomes 5 to the second a to the, and we learned that earlier in the year, when you have a power to a power, you multiply. So what's 2 times 3? 6. So it would be a to the 6th, okay? 5 squared a to the 6th. We distribute the power to both. Down here I do the same thing. Distribute the second power to both. So it will be 5 squared a to the sixth. I made a mistake on top. Do you see what it was? This should be a 5 to the third, sorry. Thank you. Um, now, once I've got that far, am I done or is there more I can do? I can do more. How about those a to the sixth? They just go away because they're exactly the same. A to the sixth over A to the sixth is one, so I can just slash them out. And here, I've got a five to the third over a five to the second, so I can do three minus two and say that this is five to the first. Technically on top, isn't it? Five to the first over one, so I can just say my final answer is five. And we will stop there for today.